Compared to traditional soccer matches, sided games and modified games played on reduced pitch areas of short durations, for example between 2-5 to five sets of between 2-10 to 10 minutes, often involve adapted rules consisting of fewer players, for example 2v2 up to 10v10, that can be performed with or without goalkeepers. Sided games aim to simultaneously target acute physiological responses, i.e. heart rate, replicate tactical and technical decision making of match play, mimic the intermittent activity profile and physical demands, and to increase player engagement and motivation. However, there's not a one-size-fits-all. For example, the physical responses to sided games are influenced by format and volume, i.e. the number of games, duration and rest intervals, the technical and tactical dimensions of the sided games, and individual player characteristics, i.e. sex, baseline fitness and psychological factors. While specificity is the leading rationale, justifying the use of sided games training to induce an overloading stimulus in a match-like approach, it's important to note, while the overall relative external load intensity, i.e. metres per minute, is comparable between sided games and matches, when it comes to high speed and sprint running distances, the external load measures between sided games and official matches are somewhat different. Adding to that, over the last 15 years, in official matches, high-speed running distances has increased by about 29%, which now represents between 7 and 11% of the total distance covered during a match. And sprint running distances have also increased by about 50% and now represent 1-3% to of the total distance covered during a match. These high-intensity efforts are considered as key determinants for successful outcomes during goal-scoring situations. Therefore, a recently published systematic review and meta-analysis titled Quantifying Exposure and Intra-Individual Reliability of High-Speed and Sprint Running During Sided Games Training in Soccer Players by Antonio and colleagues aimed to analyse the evidence regarding high-speed and sprint running exposure induced by sided games in adult soccer players. In terms of the velocity thresholds used within the analysis, Antonio and colleagues defined high speed running as 14.4 km per hour, very high speed running as 19.8 km per hour, and sprint running as 22 km per hour. These speed zones were based on an approximate middle value for the ranges found within the literature. Based on their analysis and findings, recommendations for calibration of velocity thresholds, the relative area per player, the game orientation and the pitch length to width ratio are provided to help with the prescription of sided games in training. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of the findings and their recommendations. In terms of exposure to high speed, very high speed and sprint running induced by sided games, external load measures were considerably lower than comparable measures reported for official matches at the amateur and professional level. For example, during the regular 11-a-side matches involving adult soccer players of any sex and level using the same velocity thresholds collected with the same tracking technologies, on average, high speed running was 25.6 metres per minute, very high speed running was 10.7 metres per minute, and sprint running was 2.9 metres per minute, whereas for large-sided games, which is 8v8 up to 10v10, on average, high-speed running was 14.8 metres per minute, very high-speed running was 3.4 metres per minute, and for sprint running was 0.7 metres per minute. And for the medium-sided games, which includes 5v5 up to 7v7, on average, High speed running was 14.7 metres per minute, very high speed running was 2.6 metres per minute and for sprint running was 0.5 metres per minute. 
And lastly, for small-sided games, which is 2v2 up to 4v4, on average, high-speed running was 17.3 metres per minute, very high-speed running was 3.6 metres per minute, and for sprint running was 0.2 metres per minute. So irrespective of the format, sided games don't induce a sufficient overload stimulus for exposure to high speed and sprint running. And because unaccustomed near and maximal speed distances during competitive matches have been associated with hamstring injuries, using sided games training as part of a preventative strategy against such injuries is questionable due to the lack of sprint specificity. This can be explained by sided games having more frequent short distance acceleration like sprint movements, as opposed to longer sprints, i.e. above 15 metres, seen in regular matches. However, such dose exposure may still contribute to maintaining fitness in players during the in-season, when sided games are combined systematically with other forms of training. In addition, sided games can be used during pre-season to ensure a progressive overload, to high speed running exposure, as well as in season to target a minimal dose exposure when tapering or during congested fixture periods. When looking at the repeatability of the external load demands during sided games, irrespective of the format, high speed external load measures are highly variable. This makes sense given that the locomotive demands in sided games are random and uncontrolled. From an individual perspective, sided games can therefore overexpose some players to high speed and sprint running while underexposing others. So if the aim is to expose players to high speed and sprint running distances, it is recommended to implement conditioning methods to complement sided games or designed intentionally as standalone sprint drills or soccer specific circuits. We are now going to move our attention to the practical recommendations for implementing high speed and sprint running exposure focused training during sided games. First off, concerning the velocity thresholds. As mentioned earlier, high speed, very high speed running and sprint running were defined as distances covered above 14.4 km per hour, 19.8 km per hour and 22 km per hour respectively. However, Due to the large heteroneity found within the literature regarding the definitions for these velocity thresholds, Antonio and colleagues calculated the effects on the pooled external load estimates corresponding to any increase or decrease equal to 1 km per hour from their defined velocities. It was found that lower and higher cutoff values set as velocity thresholds in the monitoring devices directly offset the magnitude of external load toward greater and smaller outcomes, respectively. It's recommended to check out Table 5 within their article, as these results provide a calibration tool enabling practitioners to predict the three external loads exposure, whilst using velocity thresholds deviating from their definitions reported in the article. Hopefully, this calibration tool will also facilitate data sharing and more accurate comparisons between different teams and clubs. Moving on to relative area per player. High speed, very high speed and sprint running exposure can be progressively increased by implementing sided games with larger playing areas or lower player density. This is because there's more space available to reach high speed and near to maximal speed running. However, regardless of the game format characteristics, when designing sided games, to induce high speed running, it's recommended to use relative playing areas equal to 200 meters squared per player, for example 5v5 in a 50 by 40 meter space. To induce very high speed running, it's recommended to use relative playing areas equal to 325 meters squared per player. For example, 5v5 again, but this time in more space, for example, 50 by 65 meters. And above 365 meters squared per player, 
is recommended to induce sprint running exposure that is comparable to traditional soccer matches, for example, 4v4 in 50 by 65 metres, which would be a relative playing area of 406 metres squared per player. Moving on to game orientation. When using small-sided games with the ability to score, high speed and sprint running exposure is reduced. However, the opposite trend is observed when using medium to large-sided games. This can be explained by the fact that medium to large-sided games allow greater player and team dispersion, as well as the greater dimensions in larger pitch areas, likely promote a more direct and vertical playing style, with more frequent long-distance high-speed and sprint actions performed in and out of possession and during ball possession transitions. Whereas, small-sided games formats with smaller pitch areas impose reduced playing and team dispersion required to preserve space and, more importantly, to maintain or regain ball possession necessary for rapid goal-scoring attempts. Also, in small-sided games, there's a greater number of attempts at goal and shots from afar compared with medium to large-sided games, indicating that fewer high-speed and sprint running actions are required to successfully score in small formats. However, it's important to note most of the studies included within the analysis failed to adjust for the areas per player when goalkeepers were included, meaning there were inconsistent smaller relative ratios. Therefore, the lower high speed and sprint running exposure in score orientated small sided game formats is likely due to area per player rather than due to the game orientation characteristics, which may also in part explain why the pitch length to width ratio influences high speed and sprint running exposure differently across sided game formats. Nevertheless, a balanced length width ratio is recommended, for example 50 meters by 50 meters. This is because equal length and width dimensions induce higher movement synchronization in both longitudinal and lateral directions, which facilitates a balanced dispersion of players across the entire playing area. This contributes to an elongated playing shape, increasing the likelihood of distances covered at high speed. And that concludes the recommendations for implementing different sided game formats with a focus on inducing high speed and sprint running exposure. However, it's important to acknowledge the grouping of high speed, very high speed and sprint distance outputs between different tracking technologies has some flaws in relation to tracking approaches, sampling rates, filtering methods and data processing algorithms used. Furthermore, the analysis included over 1,800 males and only 66 female soccer players. So whether the findings can be confidently generalised to female populations or to youth soccer players requires further research. And that concludes this presentation. I recommend you check out the full article, the link is in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the channel. Thanks for listening folks. See you next time.